this year began with fakes. On February 2nd, a popular Instagram celebrity with about 2 million followers suddenly announced her death with a post by her manager claiming she had died due to cervical cancer. Poonam Pandey's team has confirmed her demise. She succumbed to cervical cancer. Poonam was diagnosed with cancer a few months ago. I'm alive. Indian actress Poonam Pandey faked her death for a good cause? There's a lot to unpack here, so get ready to follow along. Jay Shetty also got defamed with millions of followers. His profile was strengthened by his claim that Jay Shetty claimed to have spent three years as a monk in India do during his earlier life. However, a report by The Guardian alleges that this claim is totally false. The report suggests that much of Shetty's spiritual education actually took place in Watford, an orbital town outside northwest London rather than in India. Hello, this is the A avatar of Dr. Shashi Tharoor. Dr. Tharoor, it's a pleasure to have this conversation with you. As someone who has often articulated... Deep fakes are of course now commonplace. Deep fakes are a portament of deep learning that and refer to media such as images, video or audio that has been convincingly altered to replace one person's likeness with that of another. These manipulations are achieved using deep generative methods, a subset of AI techniques. Deep fakes use a form of AI called deep learning. This involves training neural networks on large data sets to learn patterns and generate realistic content. The technology can replace fake voices or entire personas, making it appear as if someone said or did something they never actually did. That's why I went to speak to the guru of ethical content to learn a thing Great, or two sir, of how we can save the world. So Professor Jonathan Hardy is a distinguished academic ethics. in the field of communications Tell and media at you, the University of Arts London. His expertise spans media industries, advertising, communications, well, regulation, and, and international media systems. He has authored several influential books and leads research projects on branded content governance. Professor, you've been doing so much work in uh, branded content and ethics. Tell us a little bit about what you, what is your prescription for ethics in branded content? Um, well, I think uh, one of the great inspirations for me comes from the International Chamber of Commerce. So as you know, that produced one of the earliest international guides to advertising practice, regulation and ethics. And it was surprising to me, but it's not until 1966 that a new measure was introduced on the identification of advertising. And that begins what we might see as the principle that marketing communication should be recognizable as such. So that's certainly been an inspiration for a lot of our research, looking into the challenges in a new world where branded content can merge um, media content and advertising, um, to think through what are the appropriate rules going forward, what are the appropriate measures, and listening and understanding what people in the industry, what policymakers, regulators, and others. Um, think is appropriate. So that's a, a, an important space, not the only issue, but I think it's a very important one for us. So we are, uh, of course, BCMA India, and uh, we are trying to create, get the right ethics. Uh, what do you, you've done so much of learning, uh, you know, from uh, in your research. Give us some guidance on what we could have as, what India could have as, uh, you know, how ethics what, could, what would be good et ethical practices in India? Um, well, I hesitate to presume to advise India. I think part of our project is to get the right balance between listening to what people are doing on the ground and make sure any proposals um, emerge from and fit the context in which they're applied uh, and try to avoid what I think is sometimes the old bad ways of doing things, which is to say, here's a solution that works in the UK and let's try and export it around the world. Um, but I would say in relation to kind of ethics and practice, like many, we'd agree that, that practitioners making the right judgments is always the best starting point. So what does that require? I think it requires guidance and support from bodies like BCMA India. Um, it requires 
discussion to help practitioners through training um, to think about how they would act. Uh, it requires leadership in organizations to commit to good practice and share it. So we're very interested at the moment in thinking through all those measures of kind of capacity building, confidence building, training and support. That's got to be the first port of call. And then we believe there should be a mix. It's one reason our current international research project is called the Branded Content Governance Project. And governance is a slightly academic word, um, perhaps not a familiar word, but for us what's so valuable about it is it thinks about all the places in which decisions about rules and conduct are made. And that means not just in the area of law or formal regulation by governments or regulatory bodies, but right the way through to the decision making and reflection of individuals and groups putting branded content together. So a, a governance mix that works has to think about what's happening across all of that spectrum. And so guidance and support for individuals, um, good practice guidance um, from industry bodies, self-regulation, yes, because the industry is the most uh, adaptive and alert to what's happening. But in a UK context, I must say, we also believe there's an important role for uh, statutory regulation too. Um, because there are enormous pressures um, driving forms of branded content. And we think to get the right balance for the industry, for consumers, for society, there's a role for regulation too. And you think that, um, you know, uh, it would be successful? You, you think, how do you think it could be implemented? I, I, I put this in long historical terms. So I think we have some big challenges. I go back to thinking about the 20th century in which advertising and media were largely kept separate. Um, they were often carried by the same vehicle, newspaper with ads, magazine with ads, the ads between TV programs, but they were kept separate. And we know that that's under increasing pressure. Um, for marketers, the opportunities to reach people beyond the resistance there is to traditional advertising is one, the need for media to monetize uh, right the way through from traditional media to influencers are others, the opportunities of technology, the new forms and formats that are emerging. So lots of things are driving branded content and this undoubtedly produces challenges. I think what we'd like to see is kind of principles like um, identification and appropriate uh, recognition um, for consumers being, being strengthened. Um, I think we need a debate about when advertising and media are okay to be joined together and when they should still be separated. I think that's challenging. Um, and I, I hope we get to a world which supports brand funded contents in a whole variety of ways, um, but which also um, recognizes these challenges and provides some safeguards so that um, people know when they're in a, a marketing environment. One of the key things we identified is that much of the debate focuses on the labeling and identification of advertising for consumers and that matters but i think it sometimes displaces some other issues and one of them is about what this means for media and communications what this means for communication space so traditional concerns about protecting editorial independence and integrity or artistic integrity um, we think they're important and we think there are issues ultimately um, that need to be addressed about what appropriate rules and limits there should be on the power to advertise, because it is indeed a power mm -hmm. um, to pay to promote carries um, enormous power and responsibility. So we think there should be um, limits set on that. And you've written, you know, I, 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 you've written so many books on the media, and you, you're literally a, a guru in terms of you know, media and communication. How have you, what's your perception of the way media is, is changing? You know, there are certain global issues, there are certain global occurrences, incidents which are happening. What's your, when you look at media, what's your take on how media should be, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they should be careful in handling uh, situation and how do you do you think how do you think it's changed over the years do you think it's changing for the better do you think it's changing for the worse do you think what's your general perception on media well 
the media how can they be more responsible the media is undoubtedly becoming a more complicated space um one of the ways we've thought about this in terms of branded content is um what we call a move um what i've written about as a move from a triad three main groups marketers um marketing agencies and media to a sextet to six in which all those groups remain of course marketers agencies and media but they've expanded in enormous ways influencer talent agencies for example um but that there are other players and we've added creators to recognize that some creators are outside of the old world which was um in general organized between institutions was professionalized was was managed and now we have creators who can communicate with no training with no support with no lawyers um to assist them uh, so that's new platforms are new and ad tech and its role is new so we w it's been helpful to us to think about the range of people and processes involved in marketing and this makes any measures very challenging i, I think on the positive side um, ai can assist in monitoring i think the fact that um the transfer of information um i think it really reinforces the point i made earlier about the need for a mix in a more complex dynamically changing communications environment we need to think Uh, not so much in the old way of looking for solutions by one kind of agency like a regulator in one place and think about how problems can be addressed in all sorts of ways um a a across the whole spectrum i think um the fact that we moved beyond a professional world in which the players interacted and understood each other to a world which is widened um new creators who are out on the amateur spectrum and outside that that includes tremendous gains it includes greater diversity of voice greater inclusion and um, greater range in the media undoubtedly but it also means that it's a less governed space and we need to think of new ways of establishing um, good practice standards and principles across this much more complicated landscape